I guarantee you no one on eBay is doing what we're doing today. So, for the past few months, basically all year except the last two weeks, we've been doing 1987 Tops Builder Set. And it's coming to an end. So this will be the last week, even if we don't pull the two players I'm looking for, simply because um, it's just a lot. And I'd rather spend 25 cents buying the singles that I need and just call it a day. But I also wanted an ending to this series, just in case. So I finally, and by the way, not the seller's fault, but finally got these in. These are rack packs here. Old school. We got, I think, three or four, got four or five of them in here. I don't even know. Um... That one's a good sign, by the way, because that's one of the guys we need. Spoil alert. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so there's two guys we need, and that is it. Then we complete the set. I get to finally fill up my uh, binder that I have for this um, and all that. So, yeah. The reason why I'm doing 1987 is simply because that's the year that started it all for me. And I wanted something that was different, nostalgic. And there's nothing more nostalgic than 1987 tops for me. And probably for a lot of you too. Because a lot of my viewers are my age. So basically 87 is probably in your wheelhouse. Or maybe just a hair before. Uh, but everybody knows the 1987 tops look with the wood finish. As you can see on this Dicky Thon. And there's a ton of Hall of Famers. You got a lot of last year cards. You got a lot of uh, like second, third year players. Uh, just a ton of just big name Hall of Famers. Every pack, you're pretty much guaranteed to hit a Hall of Famer or two. So that's what made this kind of fun. Uh, but at the same time, when you only got two guys to go, Tim Burke and Bobby Thigpen, by the way, that's the two we're looking for. And you probably saw one of those players when I was doing all this. And that's it. That's all we're looking for. So we're just going to open this. We're going to do this breaker style. It's going to be pretty fast. If you're somebody who likes to look at the pictures of the cards, um, I suggest slowing this down because I'm only going to be looking for those two and that is it. As I said, we did find one of them. But when you're only one card away from a full set, you're basically in a needle in the haystack type of situation. Because it's a 1 out of 48 shot to pull a card no matter what. It's not like a collective 1 out of 48 where, you know, eventually the odds work in your favor. That's just not how it works. So, but here it is. A big giant stack of cards. We're going to go through this right here. Uh, it's been a fun series. I don't know if I'm going to do one next year. Um, I'm probably, I would say, 20, 80, 20% chance I'll do it, and 80% chance I won't. So we'll see. But anyway, we're going to start off with Sweet Lou Whitaker right there in the All Star cards. Good one. Terry Harper, Rick Dempsey, Dale Murphy, almost a Hall of Famer, Johnny Grubb. Well, there we go. That's better. Gary Pettis, he was a pretty good player. Tony Phillips, he was when he was on the A's, he was a problem. And then he went to the Tigers, I believe. Herb Willingham, Gene Mock, Denny, Pasqua, Oil Cam Boyd, Tim Lear, Don Mattingly, almost a Hall of Famer. I'm on the camp of Mattingly is not a Hall of Famer. Sorry, but five great years doesn't get you on the Hall of Fame in baseball. This isn't like football. Good player, though. Good player. Uh, Jamie Quirk, Tom Browning, I think he pitched a perfect game, if I'm not mistaken. Doug Drabeck, he was a pretty good pitcher back in the day. Ken Griffey uh, Sr., Jr. came out in 89. Bruce Suter, he's a Hall of Famer, put him on the stand. Hossie, Will Clark, pretty good player, almost a Hall of Famer. Some of these have kind of jacked up corners, but whatever. So, this package... Let me tell you. So it left from... Hold on, I got... I have the box still here. It left from Texas. I live in Las Vegas, hence the 702. 
Kevin Mitchell. It went from Texas to Phoenix and then just got lost for like a week and a half. And I was going to reach out and I'm like, no, nope, I've been in this situation before as a, as a seller. Kind of want to hold back a little bit. Uh, Bedrock had a good year in career. Mike Schmidt. I was like, it's probably best if I just kind of just wait it out. And I waited it out, waited it out. And then all of a sudden I got an update saying it was in LA. I'm like, well, that's weird. So I went from LA to Colorado. So flew right over my house, back to Phoenix, back to LA before it got here on Tuesday. That is one hell of a, oh, Raphael Belliard. Um, Charlie Huff, P. Rose. One hell of a journey. It was so weird. It went all over the place. Um, crap, I'm not looking for Tim Burke. Hold on. I'm, t I'm telling the story and I'm like, okay. Uh, I don't think I got him. This nope, okay. Lance Perry's pretty good. So it took a little while. Not the seller's fault. Seller did his job. USPS sometimes gets a little crazy. That's why it's best to always wait a couple weeks because I cannot tell you how many times... As a seller, I have had somebody, there's Bobby, there's Bobby, there's one of them, uh, where I've had, we had Dick Thon a couple times, haven't we? But anyway, where I've had packages just get absolutely lost somewhere in the cosmos before finally arriving at the destination. So it's, don't wait a week, don't wait two weeks, wait three weeks before you complain, file complaint, and everything else. Um, I know it's kind of pain in the butt to do, but as a seller, I've been there. It sucks, Gary Gaddy, but uh, it's something that you you have to you have to be patient on. Um, it's just best on both parties. So, plus, if it's not if it did not get to you or does not say delivered, that is on the seller to do the um, uh, refund through USPS. That is what USPS suggests, and it's actually a pretty easy process. Not very hard at all. Um, ooh, Roger. Not a Hall of Famer, though. But, uh, yeah, anyway, and if it does say delivered and it's not in your inbox, either wait a day or two, and if it doesn't show up within that day or two, how about those back-to-back -back cards, Seaver and Jackson? If it doesn't get there in a day or two, the seller, or the, excuse me, the buyer has to do the the report because they have to file their own report, your mail carrier, on the item itself because it could be a crime if it was stolen. So keep that in mind. And yes, that is a pain in the ass on the buyer, but that is what they suggest people do. So keep that in mind. Al Newman, there we go, twins great. Chat Lemon. Uh, so far, we have not hit our last guy, Nolan Ryan. That's a big name. Rasmussen. But yeah, I mean, for cards that are old, I mean, pretty, pretty solid. Some of them have a little messed up corner, but it is what it is. All right. Where is Tim Burke? Tim Burke, by the way, I believe is an expo. Oh, expo? That's Jeff Reardon. All right, Reardon, right there. Lance Parrish. Tony Gwynn, there we go. Tony, we got a Tony Gwynn. Vince Coleman, he was pretty good. Again, like I said, just a ton of big names in here. It's a very fun set. Dewey had a good career. Denny Martinez had a good career. Balboni. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's uh, two Bobby Thigpens. So I've been waiting for Bobby Thigpens since January of last year, and I just pulled a two of them. How crazy is that? Oh, get your mustache out. Bobby Valentine, Lance Parrish again, Pete Rose again. Juan Berenguer, that guy threw gas. He was awesome. <clears throat> But yeah, this uh, set, very nostalgic for me. Um, awesome, fun rip. Another Kevin Mitchell. Just had a blast opening it, doing all this. Um, I don't, 
for me, this is the most fun part of the hobbies when you do things like this. The ultra modern stuff is whatever. But, oh wait, Carlton Fisk is a Hall of Famer. And so is uh, Robin Young. Oh gosh, I messed up my whole stacks, didn't I? That's fine. Okay, Alan Trammell's Hall of Fame. There we go. Billy Doe, Rabideau. Dave Parker. He's not Hall of Famer, which is weird. All right, we are waiting for Tim Burke to make an appearance. Come on, Tim Burke. There's only 18 million of them printed, and I cannot find him. But yeah, this was it. This is the one that started it all. Um, I remember going to the card store with my dad, getting a pack, like, every week. There's Kirby right there. We got to pull a Kirby and a Tony. That's my two favorite players, Goose. And getting a pack every so often, usually about every week. And I was just so pumped. I did not care about condition. I tore my cards apart. Uh, I kind of wish I would still have those original cards. Wait, another goose? Another Kirby? What the heck is going on here? <laughs> a lot of duplicates. <laughs> but, <I'll, laughs> but no, Tim Burke. There's Fernando. Rest in peace, Fernando. He's a former Padre. Rick Sutcliffe, he had a good career. Ruben Sierra had a good career. I don't think we're going to get the last guy. So it looks like I have to hop online and buy him. Uh, luckily, there's a lot of people selling 87 tops. Probably get one for a quarter, I assume. And then, what, 40 cents shipping? So a dollar all in. Roy Lee Jackson, one of my favorite photos. Straight out of Compton. Bill Buckner, Ozzy, Jerry Reed, Frank Pastor, Giants Leaders, Barry Bonds makes an appearance. And we end with Steve Sachs, which just seems so fitting that we just, you know, we got one. So we got one off the list. I'm going to hop on eBay and buy the Tim Burke. That's it. That's the only one. But anyway, if you watched all these videos, thank you so much. Hopefully it was a little nostalgic for you. Um, I'm going to give a quick look at all these. And I really appreciate it. I do have a binder that I put everything in. Again, old school, very, very old school way. I just absolutely loved this doing this series again i don't know if i'm gonna do it next year um the set i want to do is not necessarily the cheapest for boxes i kind of just wanted to just do this uh, fun and once once money gets a little high it, it becomes less fun but we'll see we'll see uh randy myers he had a pretty decent career for him for a good minute but yeah i mean 87 tops. I mean, you can see why it was a lot of fun to do. Al Newman, who held the record for most games without a home run. And I think Raphael Belliard broke the record, which is why I said Belliard's a record breaker. Alfredo Griffith. <laughs> there he is. There's Rafi. And I don't think I pulled him. Nope, not on that one. All right, last stack, and then we'll end the video. Uh, if you like this video, awesome. I appreciate it. If you like this series, awesome. I appreciate it. Again, I might do one next year. Haven't quite decided. I don't know. All I know is election day is on Tuesday, and it's going to be a chaos either way. And we probably are not going to know who's going to win till probably Saturday. So just one of those things. I'm just gonna have to live with it. I don't think we pulled the Tim Burke. Put guy in the good pile. We did not. No Tim Burks. Total spent at twelve billion dollars. At least that's what it felt. But yeah, we got a bunch of. Well, I guess Barry's not a Hall of Famer. But we got a bunch of Hall of Famers in here. We got two Kirby's. We got a Tony in here. Nolan Ryan's in here. Ripken, the back-to-back -back of Reggie and Seaver. That was fun. Ricky, Suter. So, that's it. All right, that's the series.
set will be complete in a couple days when that card cut comes in. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Thanks.